the Court of Auditors found that there were 20 different models in place to calculate income support. This gives so much flexibility to the member states that it's for them rather easy to um, sort of sidetrack the general objectives of the common agricultural policy. And the same accounts for the agri-environmental support, where we have more than 100 different objectives. 39% of all the contracts uh, within these agri-environmental schemes were at farms with no specific environmental problems. The main goal is to uh, foster productivity and uh, support uh, income for farmers. Now, those two goals must be mutually compatible. Now, those goals have also evolved to include uh, environmental protection, uh, balanced uh, development uh, in uh, rural areas, and animal welfare, and so on and so forth. The prevailing legislation is not entirely consistent with those objectives. What about the most important issue confronting uh, agri uh, agriculture today because it has not been well addressed in the past. How are we going to really to move towards a low carbon economy? I think that there's a lot of onus placed on the member states as well and not just the, the European Commission that how to use the money which is being given to them to, to have a long-term vision for what we mean by competitive and sustainable agriculture, because the long-term vision is more than just the, the, the types of greening measures which the Commission may have been work proposing so far. The proposals for direct payments raise a number of risks, certainly seen from a paying agency perspective. Um, I think the paying agencies are struggling to see where uh, the, the real simplification is in the proposals. There's certainly a number of new demanding um, and potentially costly requirements, uh, both for paying agencies and for farmers. The transition timetable seems very demanding, not to say unrealistic. The potential result um, of the complexity as well as additional costs, could be an increase in the error rate. Uh, any increase in terms of margins for the farming sector have been largely swallowed up by the fuel prices. We're seeing um, costs of fertilisers increasing by 180%, uh, more than 200% increases for fuel costs. So that's of course, putting pressure on margins. 61% increase in agricultural prices, but a 180% increase in fertilizer and a 244% increase in energy, that is quite revealing. I think I also noted that if you look at the agricultural budget for the last number of years, the European Union has in fact decreased the budget in comparison to what we had for 15 countries. And now with 27 countries, I have not seen any reciprocal uh, movement in the other trading blocks of the world.